Hello, welcome back. Good morning. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for logging in and checking this out. You're going to learn some things. Some things that are going to help increase your talent stack. Your mathematical talent stack. Look at me. Look at what I can do. That's what you'll say to your friends because I've increased my stack of talents. Whenever we have two values, two numbers, and we decide to multiply them, we can visualize multiplication as a product, a product of two numbers. We can visualize as the area of a rectangle. So for example, if I was going to multiply three times the number five, I know, of course, that's 15. 3 times 5 is 15. But I can visualize that as this area model. It's a very specific area model. You can see I have 1, 2, 3 things along this side, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 things along this side. And the area of each one of those squares is the product of the value above it and off to the left of it. It's the product of its dimensions. So when I multiply this 1 times this 1, I get an area of 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And it turns out because the, the product of this and this is also 1, and this value and this value, 1 times 1 is 1, it turns out all of these are 1. So when I think about the area of 3 times 5, that is 15 square things, 15 square units. So 3 units times 5 units is 15 units squared. But sometimes when we multiply two things together, they may not be just integers. It may be more complex than simply a 3 times a 5. In fact, they could be polynomials. So instead of a 3 times 5, we could have, let's multiply 3x plus 1 times x plus 2. So one of my dimensions has two different things. It has x's and it has units. The other dimension also has x's and it has units. So to model these we use in class what we called last semester a generic area model. I hope, I hope you remember this. I hope this feels a little familiar to you. But if I wanted to multiply these two things I could draw an area model and because I have two things by two things, I would do a two by two model. And across one of my dimensions, I can write a 3x and a 1. You see, it's 3x's and then one, and then one more. And it's a different thing. It's, they're not the same. So 3x's and then 1. And then across the other dimension, I could have a single x and then I could have two ones. Now, last semester we looked at very elaborate models where we had all the algebra tiles and all those little individual pieces. We typically don't draw these with all those little pieces. We do this, which is called a generic area model. I have a two by two grid, so two things times two things. Two things, a three by three, three x plus one times two more things, an, an x plus two. And to get the product, to figure out what it equals when I multiply the 3x plus 1 times x plus 2, I have to consider the area of each of these four sections, 1, 2, 3, 4 sections, and add them together. So we look at those sections kind of separately. So I could look at in this first box, I have a 3x times an x, right? I'm multiplying this 3x, 
this times x. Well, if I multiply a 3x times another x, I see that I'm multiplying two factors of x, and this ends up being 3xx, or 3x to the second power. The box right below that, I have the number 1, and I'm multiplying that by x, and 1 times x is simply x. In the box in the upper right, I've got a 3x and I'm multiplying by 2, which gives me 6x. And then below that, I have 1 times 2, which is simply 2. So I can see that there's four things that make up this product, four things that go into multiplying the 3x plus 1 times the x plus 2. And the four things are, we have a 3x squared, plus we also have a 6 times x, plus we have another x below, plus a 2. So I hope, I hope you can see that two of these things right here can be combined because they're the same sorts of things. They're both x's. They're not x squareds and they're not units. They're x's. So I can write this product as 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. So if I'm asked to multiply 3x plus 1 times x plus 2, my product is 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Let's look at another example. This time I also have a binomial times a binomial. All that means is that when I look at the things that are being multiplied, I have a thing with one, two different terms. I have an x and a 5. X's are x's are different things than the number than the integer 5 and over here I have again two things and I have x's and I have some more units this time the units are negative negative 3 so if I want to multiply those because it's a 2 by 2 I would create a 2 by 2 grid two things by two things and down on my left I'm gonna go ahead and write the x and the positive 5 Right? I don't have to put the sign if it's positive, it's assumed. An x and a 5. And across the top, I've got this 2x, and I've got a negative 3. I've got to keep track of the fact that that's a negative 3. Same deal, to find the area in these four different little rectangles, that's the area of the big rectangle. So I'm going to find the area of each one of these. When I multiply 2x times another x, that gives me 2xx, or 2x to the second. If I multiply an x times negative 3, that's going to give me negative 3x. Down below, on the far left, I'm multiplying 5 times 2x, which gives me 10x. And then to the right of that, I have 5 times negative 3, which gives me negative, negative 15. So you can see there are four different things that make up the product of, five, of x plus 5 times 2x minus 3. And those four things are, there's a 2x squared, there's a negative 3x, there's a plus 10x, and there's a minus 15. Again, just like the last problem, two of these things are like terms. Two of these things are, belong together. They're the same. They're both x's. And I can combine those. So if I combined the negative 3x and the positive 10x, that's going to give me positive 7x. So when I combine these, I'm left with 2x squared plus 7x, and then I have still the minus 15. So if I'm asked to multiply x plus 3, or x plus 5 times 2x minus 3, the product is 2x squared plus 7x minus the number 15. This is the product.
For our final example today, I have a binomial times a trinomial. I have two things, right? There are two different things here. There's an x and there's a plus 2 times three different things. I have x squared, x squared things, I've got x things, and I've got a 1. So when I see this, I realize if I want to make the generic area model for this, I'm going to create a 2 by 3 grid. Two things by three things. And my two things are x and then a positive 2. And my three things from the second thing, the second thing I'm multiplying by, right? you can see there's an x squared, there's a 3x, and there's a 1. So this time, instead of having the four things that contribute to the product of these two polynomials, I'm going to have six different things. The procedure is the same. We're just going to go ahead and figure out the area of each little rectangle and then add those together to get the area of the bigger rectangle. So when I multiply the x squared times another x, that's going to give me x it's going to give me three factors of x. x times x times another x is going to give me x cubed. One way to think about this too is I, I, this is x to the first times x squared and when I multiply those I have three factors of x. x, x, x. Below that I have a 2 times x squared which is going to give me 2x squared. In the upper middle rectangle I have x times 3x which is going to give me 3x squared. Below that I'm going to have 6x. In the upper right rectangle I'm going to have x times 1 which is just going to be an x, right? x times 1. And then below that I have 2 times 1 which is going to give me the 2. So you can see there are 6 things here. If I write out all 6 things I'll have x cubed plus 3x squared plus x plus 2x squared plus 6x plus 2. And as I look at these six different things, it occurs to me that some of them do belong together, right? The 3x squared and the 2x squared are like terms they can be combined via addition. We can add those up. And also, it occurs to me that we have an x and we have a 6x. And those, and they're not, they live on this diagonal for this problem, those can be combined as well. So if I simplify this, this is going to become x cubed plus, let's see, I've got 3x squared and 2x squared, so 3 of them plus 2 of them is going to be 5x squared. And that's the sum of the two things that were blue above. And if I add x and 6x, I'm going to have plus 7x. And that's the sum of the x and the 6x's. And then finally, there is a plus 2. So going back to our original problem, when I'm asked to multiply x plus 2 times x squared plus 3x plus 1, that's the same as x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. So today, I'm going to ask that you practice some of these in Delta Math. I'll be online all day. So um, please, please, please join me in the call if you have questions and you'd like to practice some. I hope you have a good day, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for coming to class.